It's The List and your boy with Jimmy Van and Sean Ross Sapp. With Jimmy and Sean, sell pills for your dumb. Make a fantastic song. Make a fantastic song. And as a wise man once said, Jimmy, and we're back. We're back on YouTube, this YouTube. What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp, managing editor. FightfulWrestling.com. I am also the managing editor of YouTube.com slash Fightful. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Should I cut, like, the Paul Heyman promo? I dare you to throw me off the air! No, I really don't think you should. I don't Probably think you should. So uh, we're doing this on November 27, and we are not doing this live this week. But the reason <laughs> the reason we're not doing it live... The irony. Has, that is, it is <laughs> ironic, because it has nothing to do with any YouTube issues whatsoever. We're not doing this live because November 27 is my daughter's fifth birthday, so I'm going to jet early, go hang out with her tonight. So we had to, to knock this out early. I t I'm taking a rare night off tonight because uh, it's the only night per year that my friends and family actually come into town because everybody has Thanksgiving tomorrow. So That's right. That's right. It's the only time I have to actually see so many people. So, yeah. I was about to ask you your Thanksgiving plans, then I remembered. Yep, my Thanksgiving plans are to come into the office and do nothing because we have a lot of American clients that aren't going to be in. Yeah. So that's going to be fun for me. And My, my uh, favorite thing is when people like watch one of these shows and they want to post some snarky comment in our comment section. They're like, you dumbass Canadians. And I'm like, now, now hold on. Hold on. Not yet. Jimmy uh -huh. hasn't moved me there yet. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, I, I don't respond to any of those people, so so good for them. Uh, a few things we got to talk about before we get started, Sean. So number one, I want to welcome our new video producer, Camillo, to the podcast. Yeah. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for having me. He is here right now alongside Nigel. He's shadowing Nigel because he's learning the ropes. As soon as I came in here, I said, hey, Camillo, you want a beer? He looked at me like I must be kidding. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I am the guy that kind of runs the place. So I told him, you can have a beer. Don't worry about it. I, I told him, just don't make one turn into seven and you're fine. Yeah. Is so. it true that I I heard that Melissa, despite the fact that there's a new hire, still holds a grudge against Brady, who replaced her? I think you made that up. I don't <laughs> think I made that up, and I think that will play out in the coming weeks on the show, actually. Awesome. Uh, you have a big weekend ahead, Sean Ross Sapp. Yeah. What do you got going on this weekend? Well, Friday, uh, actually, my wife is going with me. We're going to Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and we're going to meet up with Jeremy Lambert, Fightful.com. Uh, I haven't officially named him lead writer. We don't really care about titles that much here, but he is our, our lead wrestling writer by, by all intents and purposes. And uh, we're going to get a bunch of interviews, get a bunch of content, do a lot of stuff this weekend at WrestleCade. They've got a ladies' night out show, and I've worked great with the titles, ma title match wrestling people in the past. Conrad's got a show up there with Arn Anderson. There's all kind. Dustin Rhodes has a show up there. I'm giving away a free code uh, to watch that on my Twitter. Like, there's lots of stuff going on up there, and I'm I'm really excited. That's cool, but unfortunately, no Brutus Beefcake is going to be up there. These locks aren't going anywhere, Jimmy. They're beautiful. Look at look how beautiful that is. Look, look. Yeah, it's beautiful. I told Sean that I have a grandiose idea for Mania Week when uh, pretty sure Brutus Beefcake is going to be doing stuff in Tampa. Sean's planning on going. I told him I have a grandiose idea for the uh, shearing, but uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll wait until we're closer to the time to kind of talk about that. And one more thing I should tell the people as a viewer's, uh, viewer's note, next week I am going on vacation with my family, and so uh, we may or may not do this podcast depending on the internet there. I told Sean we'll see. It's going to be a game time decision, but <laughs> uh, maybe from location I can do the podcast next week. Uh, if, if we don't, I'll have some sort of make good for you guys. You know that I exist to do this show. It's the only reason I live, Jimmy. It's the only reason you live. So it's the only reason I live. Do you want to talk yeah, about, do you want to talk about the YouTube thing? Like high yeah, level, high bit. level. Um, now guys, there is an episode of the fightful backstage report podcast that is up on this channel right now. I wanted to do a little bit of a make good. So I gave you guys a preview of the fightful select service. Now, I, I always push that, you know, you know, I got, you know, I do uh, lots of cool stuff over there. Lots of great podcasts over there. And uh, that's the best way to support us. No matter what happens to Fightful on YouTube or whatever, Fightful Select is the best way to support us. And uh, I put a, a video at the beginning of that kind of explaining 
WWE had targeted us in the same way that DAZN did, basically matching a name of an internal stream that they had, and they thought it was uh, some robot or something, thought it was us trying to stream their pay-per-view. And it wasn't. Anybody that knows that what we've done, knows, knows that we've had thousands of videos over the years, a lot of them with WWE thumbnails. They really don't care about that type of thing. But today we got our channel back. Yesterday we got our, or Monday we got our MMA channel back. Like it's, it is one of the most frustrating things I've had to deal with. And I mean, Jimmy, you've encountered me a few times that I've been frustrated creatively or whatever. Like we've had disagreements. I was flat out mad Monday. Yeah, I had to tell Sean. Sean was doing a phone call with someone and I said, Sean, do not shit on YouTube. <laughs> Be nice because you, you, you don't want to establish the precedent. And I'll tell you guys a funny high level story. So the, today I spoke to my lawyer who has contacts at, you know, certain companies. And uh, he's like, let me kind of talk to people I know. And then you talk to, to people that you know. And then we'll kind of cross both those uh, bridges. So I reached out to certain people. My lawyer, I, I don't know if he did, but was at least going to reach out to certain people. Next thing I know, Sean goes, hey, the strike's been yeah. lifted. And I thought to myself, there's no way that we could have got it done that fast. So I, I don't yeah. think I don't think my lawyer had anything to do with it. I don't think I had anything to do with it. Either it was complete coincidence or something you had already done, maybe like the the tweets or something had something to do with it, you know? Who knows? Who yeah, it's interesting. I they have I truly can tell you guys there is no real rhyme or reason to why this stuff happens or how it gets resolved. Yeah. It is a crapshoot. You roll a dice. You hope you hit the good number. <laughs> that is it. That yeah. I have no answer. You hope you hit the good number, Nigel. <laughs> yeah, whatever the wh – hey, and you know what? Whatever number you're supposed to hit, it might change. <laughs> yeah. Like I, anybody who's like, oh, Sean, what'd you do? I don't know. I don't know. Well, let's start today by talking about Corey Graves, that guy in his Twitter game, Sean. And I'm going to give you an analogy about my business to kind of correlate to my opinion on Corey Graves in a minute. Got some, got some news on that, too. Cool. Well, and and I'll, I'll turn the floor to you. Uh, let's start with what he did. So uh, on the night of NXT TakeOver, which was last Saturday, what was it, the 22nd or 23rd, I believe, uh, Mr. Corey Graves posted this on Twitter. You have the first tweet from uh, Corey Graves, Nigel? Yep. He said, just for the record, I know you wouldn't know it, but there's actually a Hall of Famer and a former Ring of Honor champion on commentary. I'd imagine they have a lot to offer. Obviously, what he was suggesting was that Mauro Ronaldo, the play-by-play -play guy, was dominating commentary and that the other two weren't able to get a word in. That was his suggestion. And anybody that knows Mauro Ronaldo's history knows that he has a history of bipolar disorder and depression. And so maybe you don't want to be sending tweets that are taking subtle jabs at Mauro Ronaldo. What was the, uh, the outcome? Mauro Ronaldo deleted his Twitter account. Uh, then Triple H on the post-takeover conference call said Mora would be calling matches at Survivor Series since NXT was incorporated into Survivor Series. Then Survivor Series happens on uh, Sunday. Mora is not there. Michael Cole tries to cover by saying that he blew out his voice at TakeOver the night before, which I don't think anybody bought. Uh, and now uh, today, November 27, uh, NXT on USA Tonight and John Pollock from Post Wrestling reported Mora Ronaldo will not be doing commentary on that show so obviously it looks like you know it could be a problem tell me what you've heard john so i know a lot of this came from brian and dave from wrestling observer kind of putting it out there that's why morrow wasn't doing the show i i don't know i have not spoken to morrow i've spoken to people close to morrow and people close to Corey graves and uh i i know that uh dave Meltzer had reached out to sam adonis who is Corey graves brother to talk about this, but he said that he would talk to him after NXT tonight, reach out to him yesterday. I don't really know why that was the case or why that, why that would be delayed, but that, that's something for Dave to say. Uh, I can tell you that Frank Shamrock and Corey Graves had a conversation and initially it was respectful. And then I'm told that when Mar when, uh, Corey asked about Morrow and how he was doing, things got a little bit more aggressive. Um, I, I, I know that Morrow in the past has encouraged people on commentary to step in more. And that's sometimes it's something you have to kind of fight and do yourself. But also a three-man booth, that sucks. Mm -hmm. The third person can never get a word in edgewise yeah. on, on a three-person booth. But I know that there have been some efforts to reach out and like half efforts to reach out among a lot of the parties that are involved in this situation – 
I mean, the thing is, almost everybody knows the issues that Morrow faces. Yeah. Does that make anybody exempt from criticism? I I don't know. Uh, but you kind of, if you if you know who that is and know the issues that they face, maybe handle it a, a little more personally. Not only that, but if you know how valued Morrow is. Like yeah. management and Hunter really, really value more Ronaldo because he brings that credibility uh, because he is the, the voice of some of the biggest boxing events of this era and Bellator as well. So I know he's someone that Hunter really likes to have in there. We should note that uh, Corey Graves, he did the latest episode of his podcast after the bell. Uh, he apologized for his tweet. He said he never meant to offend or disrespect or disparage. And this is a quote uh, or from his uh, podcast. He said, if it was taken as such, I apologize deeply. That was not my intention. I would never intentionally cause anybody any undue stress, especially a co-worker. Uh, let me do, I just want to say one thing, and, and I have not talked to Corey Graves, and so this is kind of an outside guy from the outside looking in, but this is my opinion. My business, Sean, you know, the, the online advertising business, right? I'll go to a mm -hmm. trade show sometimes and you'll meet a guy that's new to the business and he's kind of quiet and shy. He doesn't know anybody yet and he's humble and whatever. Two years later, you see that same show, the same guy at a trade show. Suddenly he's made some money and, and whatever. And all of a sudden he's cocky and arrogant and loudmouth. The same guy you saw two years earlier that was quiet and humble. And all of a sudden he's a loudmouth. My opinion, Corey Graves, if, if, when you saw the NXT special, he was a pro wrestler in NXT. He had to retire because of concussions, I believe it was. Uh, didn't know what he was going to do with his life. You know, was kind of a, a humbled guy. Hunter said, we're going to give you a shot on commentary. Next thing you know, he gets to do Raw and SmackDown. Now he's moved over to SmackDown. My opinion as the guy on the outside looking in is that he's gotten big for his britches. And, he, and he's become a loudmouth on social media because it, it, it almost comes off like he thinks that he's exempt from the same rules that other people follow. And I definitely think that he should think twice before he's posting the kind of stuff that he's posting. That's my opinion, especially a guy like Moro. And I understand what you're saying about, oh, does it make you exempt from criticism because you have these issues? And I think that's a very fair point. Yeah. But but I think Corey I was Graves, trying to find a way to, to get around all that. Yep. Because, I mean, now we're at the point where if, if I phrase one thing wrong, then I'm gonna get bombarded for it. So that's cool. Well, let, let me phrase it wrong because I don't mind getting bombarded. But uh, <laughs> but honestly, I I think that he needs to be smarter than that. I think that he's kind of a bit of a keyboard warrior when it comes to social media with this kind of shit. And uh, and I think that he should think twice about it. He's been known to kind of just post stuff without really giving it much thought. And then the backlash happens, and then oh shit, maybe I shouldn't have done that. And then I got to apologize. You know, he's he's. I don't think he should be exempt from. Uh, from whatever rules everybody else is supposed to follow. Sure. And he's got to use his brain a little bit more. When I have issues with some, one of my coworkers like that, um, outside of like a story correction, if there's a headline correction or an error, we have a group chat and I will address that. Some of those, like those minor corrections, that way the rest of the news staff can understand and know my rhyme and reason for doing that. If I've got a, like, like an issue to that degree, I would, I would go to somebody personally. Like it's, I would like I would tell Carlos Toro, "Hey, you're way too short. Grow." <laughs> I don't want to show my staff. That's the way it is. <laughs> okay. I mean, obviously, in that situation, it's not like he can get Moro on the phone because Moro's, you know, at the at the broadcast booth. But he could wait. Yeah, I agree. I agree because it, it just an off the cuff thing that he just happened to post, and obviously, he's probably close to Nigel McGinnis, uh, and probably just felt the need to post what he posted, and I think he's got to think twice about it. Uh, now, speaking of NXT, PW Insider reports that they are contractually locked into Wednesday nights with Full Sail University through March of 2020. To me, that is bad news, Sean. That is bad news because the ratings bump that we saw last week because of all of the WWE, uh, you know, incorporation of talent, that's not that doesn't reflect a regular average NXT show on USA. You're not you can't expect the ratings bump every week from injecting guys into the show from WWE. They yeah. got to get out of full sale. They have to get out of there. And if it's true that they are locked until the end of March, that's just not good news. Yeah. And I know that there there were some that wanted to go on the road at least every other week, but uh, that's not going to happen for a while, but I mean, I, I think to be fair, when you started out, you kind I thought it was a safe move to do that. At first, sure, also, yeah. Also, the funny thing that I, I think is interesting about all this is they offered a bunch of people new contracts when it looked like, oh, yeah, we're going to be around full sale every week. And might not be the case after, like, what, March 2020? That's right. 
Might not be the case. Because, uh, I mean, I know they're offering a lot of people new, like, long-term deals. Right, right. And a lot of them are getting rejected. Oh, cool, cool. Uh, well, that kind of sort of brings me to the next thing I was going to talk about. So I wrote a piece for Fightful Select uh, talking about how I think WWE needs to launch a talent wellness public relations initiative. And the reason that I think that they should do this, it should be designed as essentially spin control uh, so that they can get away with cutting the third hour of Raw uh, and get away with trimming one live event a week off their schedule. I went into great detail in the article about why they should do it, and you guys can go check it out. But one thing that I mentioned in that article is that even though I think this, this idea would be very beneficial for the talent, I think it would help with brand saturation, I think it could help get the ratings up on Monday, they still need to be cognizant of creative. Because if they're not cognizant of creative, you're not going to go from 2 million viewers a week to 3 on Raw just because you cut an hour. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because when I watch Raw on Monday night, Sean, mm -hmm. and we've had these, these moments before where you're optimistic, you know, because they do something good, and then you're optimistic, and then you watch the next week, and it's back to shit again. But when I watch Raw on Monday night, I was very optimistic about Seth Rollins, Sean. It felt like for the first time in a while, they were listening to the audience. They were keeping track of Seth's really, really bad Twitter game. And they were turning it to turn him heel. They even did the Raw Raw speech thing. I, God, I love that. I thought that it was, was great. So, it was great. Him doing a Raw Raw speech yes. is hilarious. I and agree. Like I said, not taking a shot at, at Dave in regards to that. But it was a talking point, and it uh -huh. was a news story. Mm -hmm. And them doing that was great. And I, you know, we often criticize WWE for being tone deaf and not embracing continuity. I thought almost that entire episode of Raw embraced continuity. It did not insult my intelligence, and it kicked off with that segment that I loved. That was perfect. And him aligning with AOP, would I have preferred it had been Samoa Joe a while back? Yeah, sure, but... You know what? There, there's there's a lot more upside in them doing that with Seth Rollins. And the only reason that I wanted them to do it with Samoa Joe was because I thought that that was a formidable enough trio to face the Shield. There ain't never gonna be a Shield again, unless they you never know. Unless they clone Dean Ambrose or something, or they yeah. I don't know. Uh, but man, I love that. It, it was fun. I, wrestling had me smiling ear to ear all weekend long. I liked it too, and if they continue down that path with Seth Rollins, I might actually be interested in Rollins versus CM Punk. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know I, I, mean? I think it's I think it's the right move. And um, I you know I hear that Vince maybe wasn't happy with Seth over whatever he said out there. I thought he said the right thing about CM Punk too. Yeah. I, yeah. I I think it's just it. I, I I question if Seth Rollins himself is ready to embrace because obviously he's a passionate guy. And yeah. obviously he's defending the company and all of that. I wonder, do you think he's ready to just kind of accept, okay, what I said was kind of cheesy and stupid and, you know, people want to kind of cheer or boo me now because of it. So what the hell, I'm going to roll with it? Or do you think it was maybe Paul Heyman or somebody saying, Seth, they're, they're hating you out there, bud. So we have to kind of just roll with it. I don't know. I can ask, but I tell you what, that's the edge I've been looking for. I agree. For weeks, months out of Seth Rollins. I agree. I liked it a lot. Yep. Uh, and that takes me into Mr. Rey Mysterio, who's enjoying one hell of a resurgence. I guess uh, the treatments in Colombia are working for Rey Mysterio. And uh, do you think, because I know that he's still young and I know that he's still training and everything, do you think that this might lead to a storyline where Dominic turns on Rey? No. No? I don't. So. Not yet. Not yet. Also, I think for the sake of journalism, you need to fly me to Central America and get stem cells. So... <laughs> There's what a, the hell did they put in that guy's knee? Have you seen the videos on YouTube Kevin Nash did? No. Okay. So there are videos of Kevin Nash promoting that clinic. It's in Medellin, Colombia. Yeah. And the clinic, I think they own the Novotel, or at least they have a partnership with the Novotel. So the way it works is for basically one price, you get the flight to Columbia, you get the room at the Novotel. The Novotel is attached to the uh, clinic, so you can basically just go right over to the clinic and, and get the stem cell treatment. Kevin Nash did a video for the clinic promoting the uh, the service, and you can find it on YouTube. He really put it over. He said, I might buy a, uh, a flat in uh, Medellin because he loved it so much. <laughs> he did. He said that. You should Man. look it up. Man. Yeah, well, the did. only thing I know about Medellin is what I saw on Narcos. So. I agree. I agree. And that's the and, first. And you know what's funny is the the interviewer on the thing, when they interviewed Kevin Nash, they mentioned that to him. 
about mm-hmm. well, like what are your what are your you know preconceived notions about Medellin? And Nash himself was like, well, I mean, you know, you know, we've heard. Yeah, uh, but 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 he's like, I came here and he's like, I love it. It's beautiful. Everybody treats me well, and and so he was saying that he was thinking about getting a flat there. Yeah, and uh, hey, good for them, and good for a lot of people, possibly. And Nash looks amazing. He's sixty years old. You know what I yeah. mean? And yeah, he... and Ray Mysterio looked cooked five years ago. I agree. He looked done. I agree. I thought he was going to have to retire. And reasonably so, Jimmy. I mean, the guy was in, like, what, his late 30s at that point? And a lot of people are like, oh, late 30s, whatever it may be. Because he's, he's 44 now. He'll be 45 in two weeks. Right. He was at the, you know, almost 40 years old, but he had been wrestling since he was, like, 15 or 16. Right. So we're talking 20, 25 years of high level, high speed, Rey Mysterio style that you can't really compare to anybody else before him. Mm -hmm. And here he is still doing it. Good for him. And I bought him as a WWE title contender. I didn't two or three months ago, but they did a great job with him. And I I love watching Rey Mysterio wrestle. I feel like I feel like we're getting bonus time here. You know, they always talk about that it factor. You know, they always talk yeah. about that intangible quality that certain guys have. And when you look at Rey Mysterio and then you look at, say, Callisto as an example. Callisto exactly. athletically is every bit as good, if not better, than Rey Mysterio Jr. But Rey Mysterio has got that certain intangible quality that Callisto doesn't have. And yeah. I, it's it's hard to put your finger on what it is, but the crowd, he just takes to the crowd differently, and he's got a certain star power presence about him. Callisto just and, – and none of the other luchas, for that matter, in WWE have – Yes. And so good for him that he's still getting it done at 45. I want to ask your thoughts on Asuka for a second. Okay. So I think that as a tag team, the, the Kabuki Warriors are next level right now. Mm-hmm. I think that turning heel was a great thing for them. I think that Kyrie Sane, her transformation as a heel has been terrific. Uh, I think she's really stepped it up from the little pirate babyface thing she was doing to now being a heel. I think that they are head and shoulders above every other women's team in WWE. But here's my question for you. The Mist. Okay, so the long time criticism about that mist, and this is going back decades to the great Muda and to other people. The long time criticism is that it makes referees look stupid yes. because they'll count the pinfall and the person that took the fall, they're covered from in, in this mist and the referee plays dumb to it. I was watching Raw this week and, and obviously Oscar's been doing the mist for a while. It's nothing new, but I was watching Raw this week. Charlotte was drenched, Sean. Yes. She was drenched. It's like she jumped in a pool of green mist. Referee counts her out. Charlotte's in the ring complaining. The referee basically takes a look at her, then leaves the ring and gives Oscar the belt. Uh, and I thought to myself, okay, I, I, the mist thing is cool. And I like that Oscar started using face paint to try to cover for the fact that she had mist coming out of her yeah, mouth and everything. I like that. But Charlotte was so drenched. I thought, how long can they get away with these referees looking stupid? Like, what are your thoughts on that? I think that somebody needs to pull an eddy on her at some point and like just bring a capsule and pour it all over their face while the ref is down or something and then uh, get her DQ'd for it. But you, one of one of the things that I would love to see WWE work on is burying refs. They bury the refs an awful lot. And if you don't respect the refs, you don't respect the rules. And if you don't respect the rules, it's hard to follow along a lot of times. That's one of the things you're told in – like almost ahead of any wrestling show, don't bury the ref, especially in the first match, because if so, they the fans aren't going to respect them for the rest of the show. So it's hard for us to enforce rules. I think they got to come up with a more creative way to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want them to go and do fireballs and shit. That's for <laughs> sure. That's that's too dangerous. Yeah, but they do have to. Have you ever have seen? Uh, have you ever seen Hulk Hogan Killer Khan from? 86, I think it was. You ever seen any of their matches? They worked MSG a few times. It's televised. You can probably find it on YouTube. You ever seen those? Uh, Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the finish that they would do in those matches? Killer Khan, Hulk Hogan? Yes. And what did they do? Wasn't wasn't the fireball? No. So Killer Khan was doing the miss gimmick. And Hogan came out for their match, and he had his hands all taped up. And the, com- oh, the commentators, yeah. the commentators were like, because I think Heenan was a commentator going, why has Hulk Hogan got his fist taped? Like, the referee needs to check. Why does he have his fist taped? The finish comes. Killer Khan's going to go for the missed spot. Hogan gets the hand up and blocks it, rubs it in Killer Khan's eyes. Killer Khan mm-hmm. takes the bump, leg drop, three count. And that's the way that they explain. Nice. That's how they explain Hogan getting around the mist. 
Nice. So, I like that. I liked it, too. One other thing about the Kabuki Warriors. So uh, this weekend, there's going to be a Starcade special on WWE Network. It's taking place, I think, in Duluth, Georgia, uh, Sunday at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, let's talk brand extension, Sean. Let's mm. talk about how they had the draft and how the rosters are separate and how they're never going to be together again except for maybe the Survivor Series. Kabuki Warriors are going to be in a three-team, four-team, sorry, uh, non-existent brand extension matchup. I'm okay with that. It's the WWE Women's Tag Titles. Okay. So how about the fact that they're going to have Bobby Lashley, R Rusev, that's a Raw match. They're going to mm -hmm. have Roman Reigns, Baron Corbin, which is a SmackDown match. They're going to have New Day Revival, which is SmackDown, I guess, now, yeah? Yeah, but I mean, all the pay-per-views are going to have be mixed brands. Like, they're, they're doing co-branded pay-per-views. It just seems to me like when you're trying to, you know, we're doing a draft and there's separate rosters. And yeah. by the way, we're going to throw teams from Raw SmackDown into, into a tag match. And you know what I mean? The, the people are never going to buy this whole separate sure. brands I mean, thing. I have a lot of problems with, with the way they handle the brand split uh, often, but this one I don't. The women's tag titles, I'm completely fine with that being the exception because it is cross-branded. They can show up on either brand, whatever they want to do there. And I don't have a problem with them having Raw and SmackDown matches on um, on uh, the same show. show. Because that, that's going to be the, the case. At least special events like Starcade. If this was Raw or SmackDown we're talking about, I'd have a big problem with it. What do you think about The Fiend versus Braun Strowman in a cage match for the Universal title? Who Who's Braun facing? It's supposed to be The Fiend versus Braun yeah, Strowman. Yeah, it's, it's a dark match, I bet. Dark Is it? Match. Yeah, I think they're going to run like two matches on the... Special. Okay, I hope I think so. I think they're running Rusev and Lashley and then the tag titles on there, and that's okay, it. Okay, okay, I hope so. They, because... they'll, they'll add something the day of that will be on there. Okay, I'm sure it'll end up on YouTube, The Fiend versus Braun Strowman. And yeah, what do I'm you sure think? it'll get copyright flagged, too. Yeah, it might, but do you, do you think The Fiend is going to no-sell like 18 power slams? Like, what do you yep. think? Uh, oh, man, that's something. Yep, sure do. So uh, tonight is AEW Dynamite on TNT, since we're doing this on November 27. I want to ask you... First, Joey Janela's tweet work, right? I I would believe so. Yeah, it was I, a work. I, I haven't heard, but I believe so. Yeah, and would I you, think AEW asked him to take it down. Would oh, you? If, even if AEW didn't, it work. I mean, come on, it, it got people talking. We're mentioning it right now. Would you believe that there were people on Twitter that were saying to Joey Janela, "Well, since you're unhappy with AEW now, can you go to WWE?" Yeah, I saw that. Thinking, how do you not think that's work? He mentioned a storyline in his tweet. You know what I mean? The thing I like about it, it was all in storyline. Like, that's the thing. Like, he it was it was vague enough to where you could think, oh, well, he means creatively. How did that happen? But really, he meant the storyline, and I love that. I thought that story was really, that was really smart. How he made you question: Is he talking about creative or is he talking about the storyline? So that's pretty cool. What's up with the dynamite diamond ring? I, I don't like rings and what's stuff the, like what's that. The par, par, what's, is, did Cody get that because of the Ring of Honor thing when he had a ring? Is that the point? Well, I mean, that was all his idea anyway. Yeah, that's what but, I'm saying, yeah. And they had the Battle Bowl ring back in the day. But um, Cody at StarCast had said, or I think it was maybe the media call before, said, oh, there will be a prize, a secondary prize for people to fight over. If this is it, uh, I don't like it. I don't like it either. So it's uh, MJF against Hangman Page. The winner gets a ring. An actual ring. Uh, they're calling it the Dynamite Diamond Ring. And it's going to be presented by Diamond Dallas Page. I think it's stupid. Why would you want to fight over a ring? I don't get it. It's what they're doing. But I tell you what I will like. They're going to do Jericho against Scorpio Sky. And you know what I like about what they're doing with Jericho, Sean? It mm -hmm. reminds me of Ric Flair in the late 80s when he was having matches against guys that you wouldn't necessarily think of as being, you know, a, a, a high-level singles guy. Like, Ric Flair was having matches against Ricky Morton. He was having matches against Road Warrior Hawk. You know, he was having all these singles matches against guys that you wouldn't necessarily think of. Chris Jericho, he already had Darby Allen a couple of weeks ago, and now yeah. Scorpio Sky. I like it. It's different. You don't see a lot of that. That'd be like Braun Strowman getting the ring with, I don't know, pick a name, Sean. Cedric Alexander. Yeah. You know? I agree. Not even Braun Strowman. Brock Lesnar. Be like Brock Lesnar getting in there with Cedric Alexander. Well, well, you know who got back in the ring this week, Jimmy? Who's that? Matt Hardy, who we have an interview up with. Finally, I got to release it 
And you all get to listen to a clip of it right now. Take a listen. What does Vince McMahon think of the broken universe? <laughs> uh, How do those conversations go? Yeah, when I first was was going to do Woke Matt Hardy, I had to talk with him for 30 minutes, and I kind of explained the whole broken universe deal. I, I don't think he understands it completely. Uh, you know, a, a lot of it, is, part of it is based off different various TV shows I watched, and, and it's very Deadpool-driven. You know, like Broken Matt Hardy winks at the audience and kind of breaks the fourth wall, and I don't know if that's something Vince really... Uh, enjoys or likes to do a lot or whatever unless like maybe it's his specific idea yeah. you know I, I i think it was very involved and i don't think he got it all i know when he watched the ultimate deletion he said well people seem to like it i don't know if i get it yeah. you know but like the the thing that i i do give vince credit for is that he allowed me to do it uh he allowed me to have that ultimate deletion and did give us an opportunity to do that and, and internally it was it was a success and it did well in the same way i'm kind of curious as like how a Bray Wyatt or a Jeff Hardy react because a lot of this is, is just you coming up with this and you got to lay it out to them sometime and we know that you and Jeff have very different personalities you and Bray have different personalities how do they react to that do they see the vision or do they do they take some convincing I, I I'm not sure Jeff did it first but once he got into it and once he was broken and he was brother Nero he was all about oh, yeah. it and, and he he loved it he really did enjoy it Bray and I were much more on a similar thought process I'm a big fan of Bray's creative process, you know, and I love the 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 Fiend and then the duality of the Firefly Funhouse character as well, you know, how, how it gives him some range. And, and it's very similar in many ways to, to the Broken Universe. And I feel like with five hours of live television programming, variety is good. Variety is very good. And now we see all these other companies on TV, so it's content, content, content. Uh, do you ever see people, I mean, obviously you're a creative guy, and I've, I've heard you say you'd be interested in the creative team or, or doing something creative after your in-ring career is over. Uh, do you ever go to people and like kind of give them input, have these ideas that you have for yourself and provide for others? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, that's not really my job yeah. or capacity now, but no, there's times I'm, I'm definitely open to giving my insight or my opinion if someone is interested in having it. And I have a pretty good grasp on that. Like, I understand what professional wrestling is is, is at its core. It's like a competition and, and you really need to get like this bad guy that you want to have like some sort of, uh, you know, one up on the good guy and see the good guy overcome the odds. I mean, that is re wrestling at its core. And when you have great athletes, you make amazing matches. But then there's also stuff that is attractions and there's stuff that's variety. And there can be a cruiserweight division. And there can be, you know, the 24 seven thing is super entertaining. And I think it's great variety for the show as well. You know, but there's just, it, it's entertainment when it's all said and done. And I think if you have variety, that, that, that is what it takes to keep viewers invested now for a long amount of time. And we're back. You all can see that full interview at youtube.com slash Fightful. I'll have a bunch in the backstage report on it. Uh, we'll have lots of articles out on it. It's a good time. People like good times, Jimmy. Yeah. People like did, to have did, fun, did you know Sean. That? People like to have fun. People like good times. And a lot of times are the result of erect penises, Jimmy. If you would believe that. And I if you want that. to ensure that someone gets their stuffing and their gravy this Thanksgiving season, <laughs> make sure they got something a little bit special to gobble up by using BlueChew.com <laughs> code FIGHTFUL. <laughs> you ever uh, seen those pictures of the turkeys and, like, you see their tail fanning out? And it, no, those are mad dicks behind them. That ain't feathers. Dicks. That's what it is. And they're all hard because they're all on Blue Chew. And they all use the code FIGHTFUL. Now, you need a prescription for this, but it's prescribed online. It ships straight to your door. You don't have to wait in line at the pharmacy or the doctor. You're prescribed online. It's chewable, so it gets into your system faster. It's a, it's good. Empty stomach, full stomach, doesn't matter. I mean, Jimmy, you know how it is for Thanksgiving. Nobody eats till like 5. So if it's 4.55 p.m., you're on an empty stomach, you take Blue Chew, you're good to go. If you take it at 5.01 and you're full, well, it's time to fill somebody else up. Thanks to BlueChew.com. It's got the same FDA-approved active ingredients that you know and love that have worked for decades, and now they're going to work for you. All you got to do is pay that $5 shipping. $5 shipping? Can you believe it, Jimmy? I can't believe it. You, it's, it's, 
It's like a Black Friday deal, but it goes on all year round. Happy Spanksgiving, BlueChew.com, code Fightful. Enjoy your Whack Friday, hot diggity dog. So NXT on USA Tonight has a tag team title match featuring the Undisputed Era against Keith Lee and Dominic Dijakovic. Keith Lee's someone they got plans for, Sean. I cannot believe that you, you, you of all people, get Dominic Dijakovic's name right every time. Yeah. And I, I have just resulted to calling him Dijak. But really? I mean, then, then again, I've been, I was calling him Dijak for like three years before he got to WWE. The, of all the names that WWE looked at, yeah. they saw Chris Dijak, and they said, you know what? We're going to need a lot more consonants <laughs> in this. We need some V's and some K's. And by the way, let's make his last name even longer. They're ripping first names from everybody. They're shortening last names. But they gave this guy like a good solid seven more syllables <laughs> to add to his name. And I, actually, I completely agree with you on that. It's not a very marketable name. It's hard to spell. It's hard to say. Uh, I don't know. I guess they're going for an Eastern European type feel with him or something. Go with Dijak in all capital letters. That works for me. I mean, Dominic Dijakovic, it, it, it's got a certain yeah. Eastern but European. He, but that ain't him. Miracle. I know, but that's, that's what I think of, I guess. I don't know. I'm it's almost like sure a Miracle Crow Cup. like Jersey or something. What's Miracle Crow Cup's real last name? Uh, Mirko Filipovic. Filipovic. You know, Bill it's kind of, you know, it's 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 got a similar feel. Yeah, he's from Leominster, Massachusetts. Yeah. I don't know, because they did the same thing with Oni Lorcan. Like, it's kind of, you know. I mean, was, what was his there name were before? Lots of, Biff Busick or something? Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of fun things. Do you remember, like, when CM Punk went over to MMA and people were like, oh, why don't they call him Phil Brooks? Why don't they? And I'm like, you, you idiots. Like, do they call Czech? Congo, Czech Guilami Udrago. No, and nobody <laughs> knows that's his real name. Chris Cyborg, They're, too. Yeah, Chris Cyborg. Not only that, she adopted, she's using the nickname of her ex husband mm -hmm. for the love of God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Almost nobody calls her Justino or whatever it is. But like, there are so many people in MMA that don't even know that Czech Congo isn't that guy's name. Right. So, I mean, I don't. I yeah, actually but, didn't know it wasn't his name. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's what yeah. he goes by professionally. Lots of people do. I knew Miracle Crow Cop's name was not Crow Cop. But I think you know. of all the names they could shorten, Dijak, all capital letters, that one just sounds a lot more kick-ass. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind Dijakovic that much, but I think it's because I say it enough. Yeah. You know? But, like, the first time that you say it or hear it, it's very, very unusual or it's very difficult. Once you say it a couple of times, it doesn't bother me, but I, I get your point. The other thing happening on NXT, Cruiserweight title, Leo Rush, Akira Tozawa. That should be interesting. Leo Rush, they're doing some good things with him in NXT, you know? Yeah, I had. so I had one person who I had spoken to often about the Leo Rush situation earlier this year that said, whether it's intentional or unintentional, he was smarter than a lot of people gave him credit for because now he's hanging out in Florida, works Fridays, gets to hang out with his wife all the time, has a title, and gets to have really good matches whenever he wants. And I was like, damn, that's a, that's a way to put it. Good for him. Good for him. Yeah. So before we go to the ne this next segment, I'm just going to say I was telling Sean we're going to discuss soon the potential fate of this segment. Stupid people. Let's go to it, Nigel. Stupid people is what this segment's called You might wonder why we do it It's not about wrestling at all Used to be WWE's weekly usage of stupid nicknames Which we did hoping they'd stop giving wrestlers lame names But it didn't work so we gave up in the new segment We came up with this stupid people Stupid people, stupid people Duh <laughs> we're talking we're talking a little behind the scenes we're sitting there talking the numbers that my blue chew compilations get on youtube yeah. and jimmy's like well what do we make off of that yeah yeah because that's 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 typically what i care about so like i said next week we are going to discuss the fate of the Stupid People segment on the list on your boy. If you want, in the meantime, feel free to post in the live chat. I think we're doing a live chat for this, even though it's taped this week. Uh, or on YouTube comments and express your opinion. Do you like uh, Stupid People? Are you getting tired of it? Whatever. Next week, we'll discuss the fate of it. 
So okay. stay tuned for that. But this week, we still have it. So let's get to it. This first one reported by uh, WFMJ, NBC 21 out of Youngstown, Ohio on November 18. Sean, get this. There's a 25-year-old man out of West Virginia. His name is Gregory Rary, and he is charged with domestic violence for punching his brother in the face. <laughs> when, when police informed Mr. Rary that he was being arrested, he said, if my brother charges me, I'm going to slit his throat. Come <laughs> on! What happened... What happened to drive <laughs> Nigel's losing his shit? He stole his Cheez Its. <laughs> I was just gonna say, what drove Mr. Rary to such rage? That's what you think? He stole his Cheez Its? Stole his Cheez Its. Uh, what drove Mr. Rary to such rage was he told his brother that he wanted to audition for America's Got Talent. <laughs> But he wanted his brother to fund his way there. He wanted him to support him by paying for his way there. And his brother said, fuck no, I'm not That's doing amazing. that. amazing. So Mr. Ray punched him in the face and said, if you, if you charge me, I'm going to slit your throat. So he so is, I, he's currently I in jail and he is not auditioning for America's Got Talent oh yeah. right now. I have a couple childhood friends. They live right up the road here. One was, they were a set of brothers. One was much bigger than the other one. And quite frankly, would beat up his brother a lot. I saw them arguing. It was over a game of basketball. And let me tell you, neither one with that were athletic. So whatever happened wasn't worth the fight. The little brother finally had enough. And when I say little, I mean like probably a good 30, 40 pounds lighter, a couple years younger. And he walks off. Like they were about to fight and he just walks off. He comes back with a ball bat. And I'm like, oh no, what's going on here? And his mom knows what's happening. And his mom comes after him and he goes, Shut up, because I got one for you too, bitch. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. At what? At which point I sprinted from the vicinity of the basketball court, because quite frankly, I didn't want him to also have one for me. <laughs> so I left. That reminds me, you ever seen White Men Can't Jump? Yeah. White Man Can't Jump, the guy's losing the game, and he says, I'm going to go get my gun, and I'm going to shoot all y'all. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he's losing the basketball game. Damn. All right, this next one. This reported by the Smoking Gun on November 18. So get this, employees. Billy or Bart? Yeah, employees at a McDonald's restaurant in Clearwater, Florida, because it's typically in Florida where this shit happens. <laughs> yeah, of course. They called police about a suspicious person, and when the police showed up, they arrested 41-year-old Martin Skelly because he had a hypodermic needle loaded with meth. All right. They took him to jail. They asked him if he had any any other contraband on him, and he said no. They didn't believe him. So they subjected him to a body search, and they found a small plastic bag containing 2.7 grams of meth. My question is, Sean, where did they find it? Up his ass. See, that's the easy answer. Yeah, that's well, the thing. Well, Mr. Skelly weighs 300. Dick. He, wears three, he weighs 380 pounds, and he decided to store that bag of meth inside his belly button. <laughs> oh, that'll make me vomit. That'll make me vomit. Because when you're 380 pounds, you can put a baggie of meth inside your belly button. So that's what he did. I don't want to hurl. He got two. He got two additional felony charges for that, and he's locked up now in lieu of bond. That's You'll have that on those big jobs. You will have that. This last one, SRS file. This was reported everywhere, especially in Canada. Sean knows oh, this story. God. Nigel know this, knows this story. Camillo probably knows the story. Within the last week, there have been three separate attacks in downtown Toronto, Canada, in which a guy has been throwing buckets of urine and shit at unsuspecting victims. Uh, now, here's the problem for this human being, Sean. Toronto, as you know, is a very populated metropolitan city with witnesses and surveillance everywhere. So it was a matter of time that there was going to be high quality surveillance photos taken of this guy. They were. They were put out all over the media. He was recognized. He was arrested. 23 uh, year old Samuel Opaku faces a slew of charges, including five counts of assault with a weapon, Sean. So. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure you saw the, the message I posted in the group chat. Who would be the first person in the office to get hit? Yes. My wife and I both agreed that you have one employee that is just way too nice, and she would think that he means well. Batura? Batura, without a doubt. She would... I think right Batura, Batura would probably help him clean up. Uh... She would, he would hit her with the shit, and he, she would offer to help him clean up. Yes. 
Yes, I think so. I That's think how so. nice she is. After this, go to FightfulSelect.com for the list goes on. We are going to talk about Ring of Honor and their uh, tumultuous situation right now. We're going to talk about uh, contract news in WWE. We're going to talk about uh, maybe The Undertaker interview with Steve Austin. And we're going to talk about the Netflix episode, The Toys That Made Us, about wrestling oh, action yes. figures. I was able to watch that, so we are going to talk about that. So check that out uh, on FIFA Select after this. I want to ask you one more thing before we get off the air here. Tyson Fury. Now, we know he's a showman. We know he's yeah. a self-promoter. We get all of that. He was interviewed by Bloody Elbow. He was asked about the possibility of fighting Brock Lesnar. And here is a quote from Tyson Fury, Sean. He said, yeah, I fancy a fight with Brock for sure. I watched a few of his fights. He's pretty handy, but I can flatten him. In a WWE match or in a proper fight, I can flatten Brock Lesnar in 30 seconds. Sean Ross app. Boxing match. Boxing match for sure. Yes. MMA fight. Not a God damn chance. I completely agree. And I would love to see those guys in an MMA fight. Uh, and I like Tyson Fury. He seems like a good guy. But you don't say you're going to kick Brock Lesnar's ass in 30 seconds. So I'd like to see him in an MMA fight. Even Buddy, if they... I'm watching Tito Ortiz versus Alberto Del Rio next weekend. I'll watch anything. That's going to be a train wreck. I can't wait. Al Alberto Del Rio is going to get his ass whipped do you think so they're gonna, bad. Do you think he'll don't actually make it into the cage? I do. I think that Del Rio wants the money, but uh, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, I'm looking up and down the UFC top tip, top 15. If Tyson Fury fought, I don't know, Blagoy Ivanov. I don't think he five, probably five foot 11, six feet tall. I don't think Tyson Fury beats him. I don't think that Tyson Fury could beat an MMA fighter that could close the distance anything can get him down i agree yeah not only has he never defended a takedown he doesn't know how to get up in a wwe match i don't want to see that because tyson fury did not have a good wwe match the first go around i agree and and i think brock could be the kind of guy especially if he hears about that quote and then if they do a wwe match i think brock's gonna take some shots sean you know what i mean well here the thing is it's it's almost an unspoken agreement in there if you if you're a shooter you got to be able to take it a little bit tougher, and right. I like that. I've always liked that. I think that's that's a good mentality mentality to have. If you don't want people to do that, you tell them lighten up, like Brock Lesnar has been known to do a time or two by punching somebody in the side of the head, which is ironic. Telling somebody to lighten up and then punching them in the side of the head. Hey, it was uh, just a receipt. He was just showing them, yeah. you know? All right, so once again, FIFOSelect.com. List goes on. A bunch more topics. Check that out after this. And next week, we'll see if uh, on location from Turks and Caicos, I can do uh, the podcast, Sean. We'll see. Yeah, of course, guys. FIFOSelect.com. I push it down your all's throat, and I'm going to keep doing it. Two episodes of Sour Graps per week. You have the Weekender that covers all non-WWE and AEW stuff. You have the Backstage Report podcast. I do a Q&A show uh, every other week. There's a lot of great stuff that goes up there. Quite frankly, I I'm ready to say it, Jimmy. I think we break more news than anybody else in the game. I think at this point, we've got more updates. We've got probably more news breaking from Fightful than anywhere else. Maybe, maybe up there. There might be one other site up there. I think, I think brothers, you all should just fucking subscribe, okay? Just do it, okay? All right? We're out. <laughs> Subscribe to Fightful on YouTube for the latest exclusive podcasts, interviews, and news across boxing, MMA, and pro wrestling.